What are you waiting for? You know what? That's what I'm going to call today's daily dose. What are you waiting for? I'm not a huge fan of waiting. Waiting is hard. Can you raise your hand if you agree with me? Waiting, waiting can be hard. You know, I have a friend who went through a second brain surgery last week. Waiting to hear the outcome was hard. Waiting for this election season to be over. It's kind of hard. Even I, who, who, who enjoy engaging in, in these types of important cultural discussions, waiting for it to be over still is hard. Waiting for all this COVID stuff to be history, it's hard. Even waiting for good stuff isn't always easy. I mean, you remember as a kid, Christmas morning, and, and you had to wait for your parents or for, for, the, for the okay to go and open up all those presents. I mean, Christmas morning is awesome, but the waiting, even for that good stuff, is hard. You know, you got a loved one coming in town, and you're at the gate waiting for them to get off the plane. And, of course, they're sitting at the back of the plane, so it's like 30 minutes of anyway. I hate sitting at the back of airplanes, by the way, because I hate waiting to get off the airplane. How about this, kids? Any of you in school, uh, you're just waiting for the end of the school day. The end of the school day is a good thing, but waiting for that bell to ring, it's hard. Waiting is hard. That's just the reality of it. But here's the question I have today is, what are you waiting for? Like, what good thing are you waiting for? What awesome expectation do you have? What's causing you to, to get up in the morning with excitement? What's causing you to sit on the edge of your seat? Is your expectation, is it like God's size or is it limited to kind of temporal, worldly, momentary things? Is, is, is the biggest thing you're waiting for the next vacation, a promotion, maybe a new car? Or, or is it bigger? Are you waiting for God to show up and to fulfill His purpose in your life? I bet you're familiar with this expression. Patience is a virtue. Do you have it? <laughs> anyway, patience is a virtue. Sometimes it seems like God actually delights in saying this. I mean, maybe you can, maybe you can kind of track with this. God might, you feel like God's saying, get ready, get set, wait. You ever feel like that? Like it's like, get ready, get set, wait. Have, ha, have you learned, though, to wait on God? Have you learned how to wait on Him and trust Him without losing your faith or without losing your mind? For instance, when your prayers aren't answered like right away, what do you do? Do you give up or do you keep waiting? When others grow bored and, and they lose their hope and they're not hearing from God or they're not seeing, seeing the stuff happen and they just turn away and they start pursuing other things and just kind of walk away from the place of prayer, the place of worship, the place of, of, of God's Word and the promises of God, what do you do? Do you follow them or do you wait and expect God to deliver? Do you wait? God doesn't want us to live a life of diminished expectations and deferred dreams. That's not his heart for us. He has plans in store for us. But he wants us to learn how to maintain our expectation, our trust in him, even as we're walking down a long hallway that separates the promises of God from the ultimate fulfillment. He wants us to wait and to trust him. And I want to tell you this, waiting time is not wasted time. And waiting is not a passive activity. During this time of waiting, whatever the waiting is for you, God is vibrantly at work in us. And He's developing patience in us. He's, he's helping us learn how to trust and persevere. During the process of waiting, he, he intensifies our hunger, our longing, our expectation, and our dependence on Him. And that's a good thing. That's a strong thing. Our waiting shouldn't be passive. We should be actively waiting, preparing, praying, fasting, in obeying while, while we earnestly expect the Lord to show up. Regardless of, of what emptiness or, or intense longing we may have or may be experiencing in our personal life, Jesus, He comes to satisfy our deepest needs as we wait upon Him. So what are you longing for? What's the passion of your heart? What's causing you to long for, for the Messiah? After all, this is really truly what we as followers of Jesus are working, waiting for. We are waiting for the return of our King, Jesus. That's ultimately what we're waiting for. He said He was going to go away for a bit, but then He's coming back. And, and until then, we, we wait with great expectation. Scripture puts it like this. 
It says, just as a man is destined to die once and, and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of the many people. And he will appear a second time. Did you hear that? Jesus will appear a second time, not to bear sin. He's already done that. But to bring salvation to those who are what? To those who are waiting for him. That's in Hebrews 9. Praise God. The Apostle James encourages us to wait. He says, be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. And then he talks about a farmer. He says, see how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and, and how patient he is for the, for the rains of autumn and spring? Beloved, remember that the waiting is more than worth it. Often I find myself singing this song that, that we sing to Jesus, where we, we sing to him and we say, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. When I see your face, Jesus, it's going to be worth it all. Even through the trials and the tribulations, when I see your face, it's going to be worth it. Brothers and sisters, join me in waiting. Let's wait with, with hope and great expectation because here's the reality. Jesus is coming back. And he is making all things new. And he is worth it. God bless you.